To kick off the presentation of the Climate Leadership Awards, please welcome to the stage once again Nat Cohan, President of C2ES, the Center for Climate and Energy Solutions. Well, thanks very much, uh, and, and welcome to the 2022 Climate Leadership Awards. To those of you who are here in person, as well as those of you who are online at home, and this, that's a fir another first. Um, this is a special edition of the awards in light of the fact that last year, due to the pandemic, we recognized our 2021 win winners virtually in the fall. And that's why we felt it was so important to have an in-person component to the Climate Leadership Awards this year here in Washington. Suffice it to say, we're all very happy to be together to celebrate our first ever inductees into the Climate Leadership Awards Hall of Fame, as well as recognizing a truly game-changing North American climate leader with the Climate Pioneer Award. First, a little bit of housekeeping. The luncheon will end at 1.15 and we'll have a 30-minute break uh, before our afternoon programming kicks off at 1.45. I also want to remind you, we, we mentioned this yesterday as well, uh, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island has agreed to be our closing keynote speaker. Uh, he'll be here this afternoon to close us off, and I hope you'll all stick around for that as well. So I'm just a bit shy of my one-year mark at C2ES, so I wasn't around for the first Climate Leadership Awards back in 2012 in Florida. But what's clear is that since then, uh, the organizations and the individuals that we're honoring today have been leading the way and inspiring others long before net zero was a frequent topic of conversation in boardrooms across America. So as we gathered back here this year in person, we thought it was only fitting that we celebrate those who have helped define climate leadership over the past 10 years. We thank you, and we've really valued the collaboration. So I'd now like to introduce Amy Holm, Executive Director of the Climate Registry, uh, and our partner in holding the Climate Leadership Conference, uh, who will present these Hall of Fame awards. Thank you very much, Nat, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm very pleased to be uh, seeing you here all again this afternoon. Um, I'm super happy to also be here to recognize the best of the best in the U.S. when it comes to addressing climate change at our first ever Climate, Ship Leader, Climate Leadership Hall of Fame inductees. Since we first started handing out the Climate Leadership Awards, over 10 years ago, we have honored hundreds of individuals and organizations for their GHG goal setting and goal achievement, their supply chain leadership, innovative partnerships, and or their individual and organizational leadership on climate change. Our Hall of Fame inductees are organizations that have won at least two awards over the last decades, and many of these inductees have actually won more, than, uh, won more than that. This kind of steady commitment and progress is what will help us get to net zero by 2050, and your leadership is truly an inspiration. We are really pleased that so many of our Hall of Famers could be here in person today, and there are even a handful of uh, who were at our first ever climate award, uh, lead, climate leadership award ceremony uh, a decade ago. So be sure to check out the Climate Leadership Conference website for a full listing of our 2022 Hall of Fame inductees. Without further ado, I'd like to call our first inductee to the Hall of Fame, to, of the Hall of Fame to the stage. Um, so I'm going to announce the, uh, the company and give a short background on their uh, initiatives and their climate efforts, and then call their representative to come up to, to the stage. Um, we sure would love to have their, your applause for their, for in recognition of their Hall of being inducted into the Hall of Fame, in, uh, into the Hall of Fame. So, if you would just please wait till after I call their name, that would be great. Thank you so much. So, first of all, Bank of America, 
who say that their cl proudest climate-related accomplishment over the past 10 years is the integration of ESG and environmental sustainability into every aspect of their company. Addressing climate change is a priority for their, mo for their senior most leaders and 200,000 employees across the globe which in turn allows them to set huge goals, including to achieve net zero and mobilize $1 trillion in climate finance. Accepting their award is Alec Lifman, Global Environmental Executive. And our next inductee is the California Department of Water Resources, who say their proudest accomplishment over the past 10 years is the development of a unique three-part climate action plan, which, is, which not only includes aggressive GHG emissions reduction measures, but also decision support for innovative climate analysis and a focused vulnerability assessment and adaptation process. Accepting their award is the department's deputy director and longtime friend of TCR, John Andrew. This is fun. Uh, next up is Co America Inc., who say that while they are proud of their 57% reduction in scope one and scope two emissions over the last decade, they are even more excited about helping our customers attain their climate goal as the goals as the world transitions to a greener economy. Accepting their award is Kristen Blosher, Vice President, Senior Corporate Sustainability Officer. Kristen. And our next in inductee is CX. X Corporation. Their proudest accomplishment from the last 10 years is that they have achieved over a 15% reduction in carbon emissions intensity on track for 37% reduction by 2030 and improved fuel efficiency by 15% since 2014. Accepting their award is Becky Hensley, who is the Environmental Pro Programs Manager for CSX. And now I'd like to recognize uh, the Ford Motor Company. The thing that they are most excited about in their next decade is what's possible with their 1,200 tier one production suppliers who are key to the success and the positive impact that they can have on people and the planet. Ford is asking them to develop science-based targets and drive progress on reducing not just tailpipe emissions from vehicles, but also the emissions that go into the individual parts that make up our vehicles. Accepting their award and on accepting the award on their behalf is Cynthia Williams, Global Director, Sustainability, Homologation and Compliance. I hope I said that right. <laughs> And next up is Golden, oh, Goldman Sachs. Their award is being accepted by Josh Friedman, Vice President. Josh? We're, oh, we're being, sorry, it's like we're accepting it on their behalf and we'll make sure to get that to them. Um, our, uh, our next inductee is IBM. Their advice to aspiring climate leaders is to address your carbon footprint from a technical point of view. Be critical about the true impact of your mitigation actions and lead with transparency and de demonstrable results. Accepting the award on their behalf is Andres Rodriguez, Program Manager, Energy and Climate. Uh, the next inductee is Lockheed Martin Corporation. Their proudest accomplishment in the last 10 years is being recognized by the EPA Energy Star Pro Partner of the Year program for three years running due to broad leadership support for and funding of energy efficiency projects throughout the enterprise. 
Accepting their award are Scott Stollard, Energy and Environmental Stewardship Program Manager, and Dave Conters, Environmental, en Environmental Engineer. And up next is NRG. They are most proud of their 1.5 degree aligned climate goal, which was validated by the Science-Based Target Initiative in March 2021. They are the first and only North American power company to have received this designation. Their award is being accepted by Walter Stone, Senior Vice President of Environment and Deputy General Counsel. They're not here. We will be making sure that we will be getting this award to NRG. Thank you. Uh, our next honoree is SC Johnson. Their proudest accomplishment in the last 10 years is that through design innovation, energy efficiencies, low carbon fuel sources, renewable electricity, and natural carbon solutions, they have cut manufacturing greenhouse gas emissions by 68% since 2000, which is equivalent of meeting the Paris Climate Accords criteria twice. Their award is being accepted by Christy Peterson, Vice President and Corporate Controller. Christy. And next up is Train Technology. Their proudest climate-related accomplishment was engagement generated by committing to reduce their customers' carbon footprint by one gigaton CO2e by 2030, the largest SBTI-validated product emissions reduction target of any company to date. Accepting their award is Scott Tu, Vice President, Sustainability and Managing Director of the Center for Energy Efficiency and Sustainability at Train Technologies. And our next inductee is UPS. Accepting their award are Mary Beth Buckland, Sustainability Communications Strategy Manager, Andy Meisland, Sustainability Supervisor, and Andrea Smith, Sustainability Program Manager. Yes. Okay, great. Um, and our final inductee into the Climate Leadership Award of Hall of uh, Climate Leadership Leaders, Climate Leadership Hall of Fame is Excel Energy. Their proudest moment was being the first U.S. power provider to set a carbon-free electricity goal, and then seeing dozens in their industry follow their lead. Accepting their award is Frank Prager. Thank you, Frank, and I also just wanted to mention you are Senior Vice President, Strategy, Security, and External Affairs, and Chief Sustainability Officer. Thank you very much. So what an incredible group of climate leaders we have here on stage today, and I would encourage you to all raise a toast to them, and please help me, please join in once again to congratulating the first ever inductees to the Climate, to the climate Leadership Hall of Fame. And I now like to ask Nat to join me on stage briefly for a quick uh, picture. Don't get up, don't lose your seats. The show will continue. We're just gonna take a quick group photo here. <laughs> 